Hey yo, L A Z Z Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man. You already know. Now I mean, I just gotta give dudes a warning. You feel me? You know when it's a shadow story. When you see it's a new shadow story on the channel, the story might get a little crazy. Might be a little extra wild and and brutal. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm just giving y'all dudes a heads up. But um, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Make sure y'all check that playlist, new and recent episodes only, so you can make sure you ain't miss nothing. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so that you get a notification anytime I upload anything. You feel what I'm saying? It's going to send that straight to your phone. Boom. LAZ just dropped something. Yursk. But yeah, man, get at me, man. I mean, hit me up for that promo. If you need that promo, send me an email at lastbeats at gmail.com you heard send me a message and tell me what you need and that's a fact you heard it's a lot of heavy hitters a lot of heavy hitting stories dropping this is one of them you heard make sure y'all check the bro shadow youtube page too because you know he is certified personal trainer in several types of trainings you heard so make sure y'all subscribe to his page, follow the bro, and tell him LAZ sent you. After I stabbed him, I turned around and started stabbing everybody in front of me, turned back, and I was periodically going back and forth. I was stabbing the person in front of me, stabbing the person behind me, stabbing the person in front of me. I ended up stabbing like eight dudes, man. So this, the situation happened with you when you was you had been in Comstock for a while, or when you first got there? Nah, this uh, well, it happened after I had been there for a while, right? So pretty much, I got there. If I remember correctly, it was sometime in two thousand three. I came out the box, right? And um, Blue Boy and them had just left. They had a little incident over there. Uh, the Lopes had an incident. Blue Boy and them got shipped up out of there. A couple months after that, I came in. So it's supposed to be a thing with no crips to stay in the jail, right? So I get there, I first get there, dudes is body bluffing or whatever. <clears throat> uh, and nothing happened, right? I approach a couple cats, we talk or whatever, shit was cool. Mm. So I'm there, I get it established. Like, I had it all love, man. The, the lokes and the bloods was... Like, we got this thing called um, Trey Day. August on August 3rd so I was dead because I got there right before summer hit right so when August swung around I told the looks like yo man we going to do trade day in the yard bring cakes and shit out because you can do that in comps so I can bring cakes out to the yard stuff like that and uh, when the dudes you know the looks bringing shit out the blood machine so they was asking dudes what it was I was like yo it's trade day yeah you know more than welcome to come down and get something so after that every Sunday the Lokes and the Bloods would have basketball games together. Like, I had it rocking smooth there for a while. Right? I was there for about a year. So now we get a couple months in. Um, Now, hold on, not to interrupt you, but other Crips was there too? Like, how many Crips was in the jail at that time? When I first got there, there might have been like two or three dudes. Um, My man Tuto, he had been there when Blue Boy was there. And when Blue Boy, he got caught up in the shit with Blue Boy and them, but they didn't ship him out. He didn't get shipped out of the jail. He stayed there. And um, the Rat Hunters was holding him down. So, you know, you know anybody been in the state, know this Bloods ain't want no smoke with the Rat Hunters at that time right there. They probably still don't want no smoke with him now. But <clears throat> Rat Hunters was holding him down, so he was good. Uh, Quick came in. Short, I think either Quick got there right behind me or right before me. Right? Um, and he a thorough dude. So it, it was just like the way things fell into place. It might have been three dudes there when I got there. But while I was there, we had a couple thorough dudes came in the building and uh, we was all holding each other down. Right? So, um, like I said, we was doing the picnic. Like, I ain't going to call it a picnic. We in prison and shit. But like, every Sunday, <laughs> we was doing um the thing. Right? Like, the Lokes and the Bloods, we had basketball games together. Everybody bringing out cakes and shit like that. Cool. 
uh, we all used to go down to the more science classes on um, Sunday mornings and chop it up, right? Dudes go down there, learn some shit. Okay, brothers, they got some brothers in the prison system that's deep, so we learning about all kinds of shit. His, historic shit, revolutionary shit, legal shit, business stuff. And um, after about maybe nine months, you know, they had a couple blood dudes come in the spot. Now, first I'm going to say, you had some thorough blood dudes there, right? Because I ain't, I ain't trying to take nothing from nobody, right? Um, Bazaar was there. Uh, Dude Germ was there. Uh, Jamaican Germ. He was a GF of one of them Stone or some shit like that. Uh, my boy Frank White was there. Uh, who else? I can't remember everybody because this was a long motherfucking time ago. Oh, Master P, my boy, baby, uh, um, brother, he was there, right? But you had, you had a, quite a few thorough blood dudes there too. It was older and really wasn't feeling the whole black on black violence shit or whatever the case, right? And that helped make it work. So I'm not gonna make it sit here and make it seem like I came in and shook everybody the fuck up. It was just some dudes was there that they wasn't with the shit, but they couldn't respect some of the, I don't know, some of the blokes that had come through before. And Blue Boy not being one of those, you know, everybody respect Blue Boy, homie, is super official, right? So, um, after I'm, we did, a particular individual came through and starts rabble rousing, right? Now, before him, other bloods had come in and was like, when they seen what was going on, uh, they try to stir up some shit. Dudes would be like, nah, man, it's all love here. Everybody cooling or whatever the case, and they would pretty much shut that shit down. But this particular individual, he has some status, right? And he's a big mouth. So he was really pushing the issue, right? And what kind of added fuel, fuel to the fire was that we had a kid there named Beanie Lope. He was um, G-Stone Crip. That's what they, the G-Stone is now to get straight that you see these rap, a lot of these rap dudes just get straight. But before they was called G-Stone. So Beanie was G-Stone, and he had like two or three G-Stone dudes there with him. And there's a blood hood called Stone, right? So for whatever reason, uh, Beanie decided to start screaming out um, the Stone Love, and they you know, responsibly Stone Loyalty. So up to that point, like he had been doing it for a while, right? And it was never an issue. But now we got the new dude in the building and he's making an issue of it, right? Now dudes have spoken to Beanie before and like, yo, Stone is not a, a crip thing, man, right? Like you really shouldn't be doing that. Before the Bloods even said anything to him, me and Duto and Quake had spoke to him about it, right? But he was young, you know what I mean? He was feeling himself or whatever the case. So, you know, he, he kept on with the nonsense. And um, dudes used that as an excuse Right, the, the big mouth dude, he used that as an excuse. Now, what you it's mean? Like, you mean just because he was saying that? Yeah, because it was like, they was taking it as a disrespect. Well, he was doing it like in the cell mad loud or in the yard or what? Yeah, he was screaming that shit across the mess hall. Right, like he, because he be, he's on one tier, one of his people's on another tier, so they come in, he screaming across the mess hall, stone love, and uh, they screaming back, stone loyalty. And this, this, the Bloodstone dudes, they wasn't feeling it, right? But like I said, it wasn't a new thing, right? He'd been doing it for, I, I could say maybe about a month, right? Because he, we tried it when he first got there, we shut that, we shut it down, right? Because not, nothing to do with the blood, it's just, it, that's not a low hood, right? That's not a low hood. So he was like, yo, that's that shit is not official. You, that's some blood shit. You sound like a blood saying that, cut that shit out, right? And um, for a long time, like he agreed, right? But a couple of his people came and you know how that is. Motherfuckers start getting numbers, they start acting stupid, right? So he started feeling himself and um, the blood dudes wasn't digging it or whatever the case. And like I said, this one dude in particular, he was using their dissatisfaction to stir, stir the pot even more, right? So he kept telling dudes like, yo, because I had blood dudes coming to me telling me what this dude was doing, right? He's like, yo, I just left 
Clinton, the big homies would have never allowed this and this, that, and the third, and yada, 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 right? So, um, it was during Ramadan, now we in 2004, right? It's during Ramadan, I remember this shit like it was yesterday. It was October 31st, 2004, right? And fucking, um, the reason I remember is because when, like, all right, so I was in the mosque, right? Fasting or whatever. I had a wicked bad headache, man. And I remember going to the pig and asking him if he had Tylenol in the, in the, um, in the booth, right? And Comstock in the mosque, right before you go into the mosque, there's like a vestibule area and right off to the left of the vestibule area, there's a little office, right? So I went and asked him if he had some, some meds in there, whatever, some aspirin, and he came at me sideways, right? So I was going to let it go. But I'm like, Nah, I went back over there. I was like, yo, man, I should break your fucking jaw. You ever talk to me like that? Spags on. They key lock me, right? So, boom. They take me up to sell key locks. So now, as I'm key locked, at the same time in the yard, the bloods moved on the, on the locs, right? Boom. They start hitting the locs or whatever the case. So, I'm hearing about this shit in my cell, and I'm like, yo, what the fuck, right? And, um... The reason I remember the day getting back to that is because Cats was telling me that the O in October and it was the 31st or so O31, which was some shit the blood used to say. I don't know if they still say it or not, right? But O31 was a thing among the blood. So dudes were saying that was why the shit happened, right? Later on, I start finding out um, that was some made up shit, but it was the dude Beanie, between Beanie with his. Uh, stone shit and the, the other dude the other dude pushed the button to send some dudes at Beanie knowing that we couldn't just let that happen right and that set the whole shit off so now I'm on keep lock I'm keep lock for 15 days right um when during that time a lot of the lows the lows went out man what did, they, out. they did something to the kid Beanie though they cut him or stabbed him yeah Beanie got scratched right a uh, couple other dudes got hit. Quick put some major work in, right? Um, Quick put work in. Uh, I'm trying to remember this little light school. It was a little light skin dude from Yonkers. I can't think of his goddamn name, but he put some work in. Who you right? talking about, Critter? Nah, but Quick is Critter cousin. Critter wasn't there with me, right? Shout out to Critter. That's a fish low too, right? But um, we uh, it was only like 20 of us in the whole jail. Right? Out of the 20, I'm going to say 15 dudes got busy. Right? Boom. Um, The rest of the dudes, yo, man, dude, one dude gave a big homie blood dude his, his mother-in-law address so, so he could stay in the jail. All kind of wild shit. Right? So now I get off key lock. I got off key lock on a Saturday. Right? And... Dude, the whole time I'm hearing like, yeah, yo, we shadow get off key lock. We gonna do this, we gonna do this. And I'm like, yeah, all right, whatever. So I get off key lock on the Saturday. I go out to the yard, right? My man Jimbo come up. He's like, yo, shadow, you heard? I'm like, yeah, I know dudes supposed to be doing X, Y, and Z. It's to the point you got dudes don't even want to spin the yard with me, right? But my man Tuto put work in too, right? Shout out to Tuto. So. I'm in the yard, bloods don't do nothing. They talked all that shit while I was keeping locked. I'm in the yard, I stayed out the whole wreck period. Nobody did nothing, right? I'm like, all right, cool. So now, um, I skipped the part. While I was on keep lock, after all that shit happened, my man Pretty Black from No Street, he bought me a flathead, right? So now I'm on, but I couldn't get the flathead to the yard because you know, you gotta walk through the magnometer or whatever the case. But remember I said earlier, we always used to go down to the Morris Science Temple on Sunday mornings. I knew that all of them was going to be down there. So I got off on a Saturday, went to the yard, nothing happened, right? Boom. That Sunday morning, I went to the Morris Science Temple. Now, to get to the Morris Science Temple, they call that the basement, right? In the, in the school building area. So you got to walk straight down this corridor. Right? Then the law library is on your right when you get toward the end of the corridor. There's a doorway there, big enough for one man to fit through at a time. On the other side of that door, you walk a couple paces, the door to the Morris Science Temple is right there. Now, this is important because 
dude, I'm a strategic thinker, right? Like, I love the art of war. I grew up reading that book and other books like it, right? So I'm always thinking on how to use my environment to my advantage, right? I knew that that door right there would be my best chance. I, I had to get some get back for the, for the Lokes. And I had to make sure that these dudes understood that I was upset with the fact that they let this dude come in here and fuck up what we had going, right? But I couldn't be stupid, right? Because that, that don't accomplish nothing. So I go down to the Morris Science Temple. I'm gripped up. I got the flathead I got from Pretty Black. Boom. We could sit through the class. Uh, matter of fact, my, my boy Bougie from the Bronx, he was teaching the class that day, right? Shout out to Bougie. And we fucking, um, when the class was over, I sat there for a second, let some of the bloods leave out. I know how they think, right? Boom. Before uh, before you get to the turn off, all right, so when you come in, you walk straight down, right? There's a, I don't know, it's a door to one of the recreation areas for the honor block, right? You walk a little bit past that, it's a turn, a right turn to go to the gym. Walk past that, it's the door to the law library. Boom, a little bit past it, not, not even like a half step past that, is the door to go past back where the uh, more Science Temple is at, right? There's a bathroom, though, up toward the front. So knowing how they think, I'm like, all right, cool. They gonna send the shooter up to the bathroom, tell them hide in the store and wait for you to walk past, right? Cause they don't, most of them, again, I ain't saying all blood, the vast majority of them, right? They not gonna shoot you straight up. They not going gun to gun with you, none of that shit right there, right? So I sat for a second, let a couple of them walk in front of me. I got up and left. Now all the big homies, they, they stayed back because they don't want to be up toward the front where the drama was supposed to happen at, so that way they don't get caught up in it, right? So now they in the back with me, right? So when we leave, I walk through that door, and as soon as I got through the door, I turned around and stabbed the first dude coming through the door, boom. His natural reaction is to try to run away from the knife. So he's running back toward the door, which means that the people on the other side of the door can't get through. After I stabbed him, I turned around and started stabbing everybody in front of me, turned back, and I was periodically going back and forth. I would stab the person in front of me, stab the person behind me, stab the person in front of me, stab. I ended up stabbing like eight dudes, man. Right? Boom. And a lot of them was big homies. I hit one, one civilian dude by accident, though. I hit him in his hand, but that was, like I said, that was an accident. It was unintentional. But, you know, like I said, man, the big homies that stayed toward the back, Logic would have dictated, right? See, how people normally work when they're afraid. I should have tried to get the fuck out of that class as soon as possible, right? So they was expecting to be, um, expecting me to be toward all the way toward the front to try to beat the crowd, right? Again, like I said, man, I'm a, I'm a strategic thinking dude. I knew that that's what they would be thinking because that's what a, a regular person would do, right? A person, an untrained person would do, right? I didn't do that. I knew they was going to send a shooter to the front, expecting me to be in the front. I knew that they would hang back because they don't want to get shot by accident and they don't want to get accidentally caught up in the nonsense and end up with a ticket or go into the box when they didn't do shit, right? So, boom, I stayed back there with them. And like I said, man, only one man could come through that door at a time. So, I stabbed a dude, he trying to run back through the door. I turned around, stabbed somebody else. Reach over, turn back around toward the door, reach over the dude there, stab somebody else, turn back. And I just did that, man, until I heard the, um, you know, they, they pulled the button or whatever. I fucking, uh, threw the gun now to get to the gym, there's a little fence right there, right? So I threw the shit over that little fence, put my hands on the wall, the police came, boom. I'm not bleeding. They took out the people that was bleeding, and they let us walk back. So now when you get toward the front of the basement, there's a, a, um, a gate on the front door to go out into the main corridor. So now we in that area is me, Germ, a uh, couple other dudes, right? So Germ is like, yo, that was some crazy shit. I'm like, yeah, that was some crazy shit. And I punched him right in his fucking mouth. <laughs> right? Boom. So now I get him and it's a couple other dudes with him. So now we just going with the hands though. Like I said before, in um, if you see my YouTube channel, man, I've been training my whole life. Like violence, I'm, I'm 
very adept at violence, right? So, and they weren't. So that wasn't nothing, man. We, the fight didn't last long anyway. It was about a minute or so. Police came, put us on the wall. Jerm had a bloody mouth. Another dude had a, it was, it was a bad situation, right? Boom. And uh, I went to the box from there for that shit right there, man. Right? But um, yeah, that was, that was Comstock, man, 2004 right there, you know? That's when, um, I was the issue with the Bloods before that, but that's when I was like worldwide food, right? Because, uh, like I said, a lot of big homies got hit dead and they couldn't just let that shit rock like that. But, um, that was, that was pretty much that. And how do, was, how you, how do dudes feel about that situation nowadays, like? Have you ever ran in contact with any of those dudes or set aside your differences or like? Well, right immediately after the shit, like, you know, they didn't just take me straight up to the box because they didn't have me for a weapon. Like I said, I had to do the weapon over the thing. The second part of that was all hands, right? So I was in my cell for a couple of days before they moved me over the long term and then shipped me out to the box. Umar from Brooklyn, that was my, um, my, my neighbor. So Umar told me he went out to the yard that evening. He said, yo, homie, he came back laughing. He's like, yo, homie, you got niggas in the yard dropping their flag, man. Right? Because the, the, the Bloods was supposed to be like the big dog. Right? Nobody went at the Bloods. They went at everybody. Everybody was supposed to be too scared to go at the Bloods. So you had a lot of dudes that became Blood. And this is where Bloods start going wrong, in my opinion, because they start letting anybody be Blood. Right? First generation, second generation... Most of them dudes are shooters, right? After that, they start, like, just letting anybody be blood. And dudes was joining blood because they figured that was a way to be safe. But now that, that incident right there showed them, all right, we not safe. You got motherfuckers that don't give a fuck about our numbers. So dudes was in the yard dropping flags and shit like that. And I seen dudes after that. And, like, some dudes laughed at the shit. Um, I had one dude, man. Wanted to turn Crip. He was blood. He wanted, he wanted to be Crip after that because he was like, yo, that was some gangster shit. Right? That's that's just, you know, but um another dude, he was one of the dudes that got stabbed. And um I seen him in Bear Hill. Now for years, because like I said that was 2004, I didn't get to Bear Hill until um 2014. Right, right before I came home, and the, all these years, though, I'm, I'm getting worried that you know when he see me, he, what are you gonna do to me and all this extra shit? But when I got to Bear Hill, as soon as that motherfucker found out I was in Bear Hill, he sent me a kite, like yo, Shadow, let's just talk. Could you meet me in the yard, whatever? Yada yada yada. We go out to the yard and talk, and nigga, he didn't want no problem, right? Ain't hey, oh, let me tell you something, man. Right, this 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 fight. What the, the angry white female like to, to, to you know this narrative? Yo, man, people that was in the state when I was in the state, no, man, there wasn't a whole bunch of people who had no problems with me, man. Right? That shit right there was was not a singular incident. It were many times dudes would talk shit about what they gonna do when they see me, and then they see me and they wanna be my motherfucking friend, man. Right? I right, know, so <clears throat> you know. Let me ask you: When you said you do pass you off a flathead, you talking about just a banger that was not an ice pick, or you talking about a screwdriver flathead? Nah, I'm talking about a banger that wasn't an ice pick. All right, it good. was just like a knife, but it just you know was pointy. It didn't really, it didn't have a cutting edge. It was wide and all of that. Yeah, it had a nice, a nice, nice head on it. Like, super, one was decent, man. Word, she was decent. So, them pokes was hurting. Word, them pokes was hurting. And again, like I said, I've been training my whole life. So, I, a lot of dudes, man. How bad did dudes me, get stabbed up now? When you were stabbing dudes up, was you just, you knew what you was doing? Or you was you purposely not trying to catch nobody? Or was you just, you feel me? You was just going spontaneously? Now, well, you got to keep in mind, I used to own me to dig it, right? For a long time, I'm, I'm gonna say this, my wife saved my life, right? Because before I met my wife, 
I thought I was going to die in prison. Like, I was just going to be in prison until I, you know, died old age and somebody killed me. I didn't have any real expectations of ever coming home, right? So killing another motherfucker didn't mean shit to me, right? And again, I don't, I don't, I don't do shit haphazard, right? So when I stab, I know where to stab. I'm trying to hit you in your eye. I'm trying to hit you on the side of the neck because I know that the carotid arteries are on either side of the neck. If I got something that's big enough, I'm trying to hit you right behind your fucking um your clavicle because I know the subclavicle is back there. I want to make you bleed to death, man. Right? I'm trying to make sure. So my thing was always, if you don't die, you're gonna understand that you made a mistake and you ain't gonna never fuck with me again. I can legit say, and there are people who can testify to this, man. There's nobody, right? Did I ever did something to? Did one of the problem with me after I did it to him, man? Right? And motherfuckers are testify to that, right? Dudes are testify to that. The only motherfucker that ever tried me after I did something to him, I feel he only did it because instead of going at him the way I would have, I tried to give him a break because I was getting ready. I thought I was going to go home, right? That was in 1999. And mother, no, I'm lying. That was 98, I want to say, in Marshall Correctional Facility. And I blew his motherfucking head off. And the motherfucking toll on me. Right? That's the only dude to try me. Right? No. Matter of fact, that's not even true. Motherfucking, the dude rag top and another motherfucker tried me in the hallway one day and they both got shot right there. I had cut both of them on separate occasions. They tried to do a motherfucking team up on me and they still came out on the shitty end of that. And after that, neither one of them motherfuckers wanted this issue. Right? So... Yeah, man, like... What, homie, what you mean? What you mean? They both got cut again? Yeah. Yo, lads. Like I said, man, you... you homie, on some, on some serious shit. I go to camps now, right? When I'm teaching knife tactics to motherfuckers in the military, right? I got people that pay me to do seminars to, to teach them how to use a knife, right? I've always had fast hands. I've always been accurate. Man, yo, bro, man. It's, this shit ain't a game, man. Right? It was never a game for me, right? Like I said, I, had, I didn't expect to go home. So I didn't give a fuck about what I did to somebody. Right? It wasn't until I met my wife that I was like, all right, cool. And, and even then, when I met her, I was still a little stupid. She put her foot down and was like, yo, you got to make a choice. She's like, yo, I understand. You want to be loyal to your peoples? I get that. So, but you got a family now. So you got to choose. I'm not going to be a jailhouse wife. You either going to be loyal to me and your son, or you're going to be loyal to them dudes in prison. And if you want to be loyal to them, to them, I respect it, but I can't be with you. But if you're going to be loyal to us, then you need to start getting this shit together so you can get the fuck out of prison. Right? How, how much time you had? I went to jail with eight years. I ended up doing 24 years with, with parole time left when I came home. I was I had an 8 and 24. So my max should have been 24. My 24 became my CR, man. Me and Fruit CR together in fucking um, Queensborough Correctional Facility. We both came home for, twice. We came home twice together from um, Queensborough Correctional Facility. Right? Big Fruit. Um, shout out to Big Fruit, the Big Fruit Podcast. Right? But yeah, homie. Like, yo, man. So you 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 got eight years good time taken away? Eight years? Nah, homie. Do the math, right? Twenty-four years became my CR date, man. I still I still old time when I came home. Twenty-four was supposed to be my max. Oh, you talking Which, about from new charges? Yeah, for new charges. Oh, come on. Man. How many new like, charges you caught while you was up top? I think I'm gonna say three, right? Three new charges. One of them on Rikers right, Island, right? I, we spoke about that before, right? And matter of fact, that was for one of the dudes that tried to do the team up, right? I caught a new charge for him on Rikers Island, right? And the other charges I caught up top, man. Right, like I said, dude, they tried me and Marcy. Um, after I clipped his wings, this motherfucker, he. he Press charges, he made no secret of the fact that he was pressing charges. Right? Hmm. I caught a new charge in Auburn, 
right? That was the shit with the police. They threw out the sword on police charge. And, um, left me with the weapon charge, right? And I caught a um a charge for. This shit was Orleans. No, no, not Orleans. It was Auburn, Marcy, Rikers Island. That was it. Them three charges right there. Huh? And you could have, so your, C, your original CR was 14. How much was your original uh, CR? Our original CR was 16. Oh, 16? Yeah. And you ended what? up doing a whole, the whole 20, you ended up doing 24 and then coming home on parole time? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and you know, again, man, like I say, man, any, you, anybody that was in the state when I was in the state, man, right? No. That shit, the, 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 the angel, what are you going on? Single white female? <laughs> they be talking about, man, dude was nobody. Right? He was nobody. He he got by on the strength that he was from Brooklyn. Everybody know that in prison, Brooklyn is like a gang, man. You from Brooklyn, you getting some shit, motherfuckers is coming to y'all. Right? But blood dudes would testify to what I was doing. You got Lion Kings did testify to what I was doing. You got New York. Motherfuckers, my shadow was putting that work in, man. Right? And I didn't give a fuck where I caught you at in front of the cut, the captain's depths, wherever, wherever the fuck I caught you at, you was gonna get got. Like so I didn't think I was ever coming home, man. I thought I was gonna die in prison, so I I was cool with that. Right? That's how ignorant I was. I was cool with the fact that I would never come home. Right? My wife showed me I could be better than that. Right? And so I'm cool. You know, since I've been home now. I came home December 23rd, 2014, and that's, I caught one violation, right? It, it, it turned into a violation. It was new charge at first. Dudes called themselves robbing me. One of the dudes had a knife. I disarmed the nigga with the knife and stabbed his ass with his own knife, and they put me in jail for it. I took it to trial, and I won, right? And dudes because, tried um, to rob you. What they was trying, trying to rob you for? I was working for Zales at the time, so... It's a whole big story with that shit, right? But long story short, short story variable. Dude did my wife and I was trying to help him and his family start feeling the way because of the shit his wife used to say to him, right? She used to always compare him to me like, yo, this dude just came home. Homie, I came home. My uncle gave me a fucking, um, a Tahoe, right? Boom. I got, from there I had a Denali. From there I had a Suburban, right? Like I've been driving pretty much since I've been home, man. Right? I always had a good job. I made sure my wife and my kid was taken care of. You know. Uh, um, like, look at now. I, I run my, two businesses, my own businesses now. Right? I work for me. Right? This is how you're doing 24 years in prison. Right? 25 and we count the year violation. So, dude ain't never been to jail. And he, you know, he, a fake gangster rapper or whatever it came to. And his wife used to always tell him shit like, yo, Ken is a real man. Why you ain't like him? You should be more like him. This, 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 this. Motherfucker tired of hearing that shit. Right? So he went, recruited another motherfucker. Right? And <laughs> as fate would have it, they was both blood. <laughs> and um, like I said, I was working for Zales at the time. And I guess they, he must have convinced the other dude that, um, I, I bring diamonds home from work or some shit. I don't know what the motive. I don't know what the other dude's motive. I know his motive was, right? He was thinking he was gonna make an example out of me to show his wife that he, you know, I wasn't the man she thought I was, or whatever the case. And the shit backfired, right? I said the dude with the knife. He ended up. I took the knife from him, gave it that right back to him, put that shit in his lungs. Boom. You know, they put me in jail for it, man. Both of the motherfuckers made statements. Both of them went to the grand jury. One of them came to trial, right? But it was justifiable use of lethal force, man. It's two of them, they had a weapon. I was justified. If I had pulled the bazooka out of my pocket and blew them motherfuckers up, I would have been justified at that point. How you disarmed them with the knife, though? Like, would he try to swing it at you or you just grabbed it immediately? Nah, he swung it at me, right? So what they did with the one dude that I knew he distracted me, right? So when I went to look at him, I caught the movement from the other dude out the corner of my eye. He swung it the first time and I moved. When he swung, he had it in, in the ice pick grip, which means the blade with the tip was pointing down, right? Like he was making a fist. 
like the Michael Myers got he stabbing in the, in the, in the, in the Harlem. I, I heard right? that's dangerous to try to stab somebody like that because that's the easiest way to get this on. It's dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, right? But um, when he swung the second time, it would be easier for me to show you, but I call it a Filipino handshake. That's not the technical name for it, right? But basically what you do is you shoot your hand in so that it go, your wrist connects to his, like we make contact with his wrist and the blade of the knife is pretty much on the back of your forearm. And then you bring your elbow close to your ribs, which turns the blade in his hand, he's gonna lose the knife because it makes the weapon go toward his thumb. And the thumb is the weak point of the hand when you go for a diss off, right? So boom, I did it, boom, and push the knife. Right? So when I did it, as the knife is coming loose, I'm using my left hand to do the diss off. I catch the knife in my right hand and I stab him in his fucking lung, right? And this this motherfucker who was just telling me a second before that how he was gonna kill me starts screaming. <laughs> he started screaming about how he was dying. <laughs> oh my god, yo! So what that you did? You happened. stayed on the scene or you bounced? Nah, I stayed. I was justified, right? Like you know. I, Yo, homie, the last thing I thought... And the other dude was, bounced? The other dude ran? The other dude couldn't go nowhere. <laughs> no, nobody was going anywhere, bro. Like I said, I, I, I spent my whole life, man. I, I, I was watching the show last night, right? And the dude said, be mindful of provoking a man to violence when that man has spent his whole life perfecting the art of violence. That's me, man, right? That's 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 my whole life, right? When I was in prison, I didn't smoke weed, I didn't drink hooch, none of that shit. I trained all the time. Fruit mentioned it one time, he's like, your shadow was always on some, some combat shit. And that's a fact, man. Any jail I was in, you find me working out, hitting the heavy bag. Uh, if I found, came across dudes who were good with their hands and they knew something I didn't, I'm like, all right, let's do a quick report. I'll teach you something, you teach me something. I was always looking to enhance my skill set, right? Always looking to enhance my skill set. That's been me my whole life. That hasn't changed. I'm still the same way, right? So, yeah, wasn't nobody going nowhere, man, right? I just didn't think. I wasn't, if I had been thinking like a criminal and not a civilian, I would have left. Right, but that would have looked bad for me because then I would have probably blew trial, right? Once they caught me, because ain't nobody, you ain't getting away with too much in Binghamton, right? But you know, I stood there thinking, yo, I'm a civilian. It's obvious that I couldn't start this, but because I'm the violent felon and neither of these dudes had felon, it didn't make a difference that they was gangbanging. It didn't make a difference that two of them attacked me. None of that shit, right? Because they was corroborating each other's story and according to their story, I just attacked them for no reason. Right, but um, once we got in the trial, and motherfucking stories wasn't matching up, and all kind of other shit, I was found to be justified, man. Right, so you know, all praise be to Allah for that. You feel me? Cause that shit could have went a whole other way, man. They was my offer was fifteen, man. They was trying to get me to cop the fifteen. They was talking about give me a fresh twenty five, man, if I had a blue trial. And you have right? been long. How how long you have been home? I had been home. That happened in 2017. I came home December 23rd, 2014. That was April 30th, 2017. Where I remember I had just took my fucking daughter. Me and my, my wife had took my son. It was a, We only had the two kids at the time. My, my daughter, Miracle, and my son, Messiah. We had just took them to the fucking circus a couple of days before that, man. Word. You know? So... Yeah, man, she was crazy. But like I said, they, they they punished me for beating trial because apparently my lawyer told me, right? Shout out to David Butler, best lawyer in Binghamton, man. Motherfucker ever get some shit in Binghamton, go to David Butler, right? But he had told me that because a black person hadn't beaten trial in Binghamton in like 50 years or some shit, they couldn't just let that shit rock. So even though I was justified, parole still violated me, man. Talking about curfew. <laughs> Why it happened at nighttime? Yeah. Right. So, 
mind you, up to that point, I had never had a violation, nothing, man. I was, they had me reporting once every two months. Like, I was supposed to get off parole early. I went to trial in December, and I was supposed to get off parole in December early. They was gonna let me off parole early that December. Which so I'm like, all right, I beat trial. I should still get off parole early. Nah, they 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 they, they served me, man. They sent me up north for 15 months. You know, but so that's the whole situation right there. But you know, game ain't never fair for us, man. Definitely where they sent from, you? Where you had to do that violation at? Uh, they sent me. I went to Elmira first because you know I'm in Binghamton, so they didn't send me through Downstate. I went through Elmira. I sat in Elmira for a while, and then from Elmira I went to um. They sent me back to Queensboro because I had laid up in the county jail for a year fighting the case, or damn near a year fighting the case. Nigga sat up there for like ten months or some shit, right? And I did. The, I was in uh, Elmira reception for way too long. I was in Elmira reception for like four months, man. And then I finished up in Queensboro. Let me see. April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. I was in, so I was in the county for eight months. I sat in Elmira for about three, four months, right? And then I finished up in um, Queensboro. How that Binghamton County was, was, it was jumping off in there? Hell no, man. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you something, right? Uh, in, in, in for any of the naysayers, my disciplinary history is up online on my on my um my Instagram, right? You want to see it? You can go see it. You also see it on my Facebook page. The reason I'm saying that is this: when I first got there, when you get to Binghamton County Jail, they put you in F pod, right? That's like the reception. Then they, you know, you go through a whole process and whatever, why they try to figure out where to put you. Yo, I sat in that motherfucker for almost three weeks because they didn't know where to put me. The fucking dude came to my cell and was like, listen, man, we never had nobody in this jail with a disciplinary history like yours. We don't know what to do with you. If we put you in population, are you going to chill? I was like, yeah. They put me in population. I was chilling for damn near the whole time I was there. Maybe a month before